Welcome to Electra Online, and now for something again a little bit more complicated. We have three charges, they're not all on the line. Q1, Q2, and Q3, they're at the tips, the corners of an equilateral triangle. And now we're trying to find the electric field at the midpoint of the triangle. How do we do that? Well, first, let's find the distance to that midpoint. If we draw a line all the way through to the bottom like this, we can see that the vertical distance from there to there will be equal to the hypotenuse, which is 0.5 meters, times the cosine of the angle theta, where theta here is 30 degrees, so it's the cosine of 30 degrees. But since we're trying to find the electric field at this point, which is two-thirds the way down, we have to multiply that times two-thirds. So d, the distance here, is two-thirds times 0.5, which is the hypotenuse, 0 0.5 meters, times the cosine of the angle theta, which is 30 degrees, because each angle in the interior angles of an equilateral triangle are all 60 degrees. It'd be half of that. So now that we have that, let's start with step one, draw the vectors and label. So first, we're going to find the electric field at this location caused by Q1, which would be away from the charge. So that would be a vector in this direction. So this here would be E1, so we use the same subscript for the electric field as we do for the charge causing the electric field. Makes it easier to deal with it. How about Q2? Again, it would be away from the charge. It would be in this direction. It will be a smaller vector because it's a smaller charge. Notice the distance for each will always be the same. So it will be something like this. So this would be E2. And now we have vector E3, but that will be towards the charge because it's a negative charge. And uh, so we'll have a vector pointing in this direction, and that would be E3, like this. So now notice we have three vectors, E1, E2, and E3. Only one of the three, E2, is in the y direction. The other ones are at angles, and we're going to have to try to find the x and y components. Of course, that's for later. Just to get us ready for that, if we draw a horizontal dashed line right here, we can see that this angle here would be 30 degrees and this angle here would be 30 degrees. So these are all theta equals 30 degree angles to make it a little bit easier in a little while when we're trying to find the x and y components. Okay, but before we do that, we've drawn all the vectors, we've labeled them, now we're going to find the magnitude of the vectors first. Let's do that next. Okay, for E1, that is going to be equal to K Q1 divided by distance 1 squared, and of course distance is the same for each one of them, so this will be equal to 9 times 10 to the 9th newtons per coulomb. Q1, it's 8 microcoulombs, that's 10 to the minus 6, divided by the distance, which we found there, 0 0.219 quantity squared, and let's see what that's equal to. So we square that, take the inverse of that, multiply that times 9e to the 9th times 8e to the 6th minus equals 864,000 newtons per coulomb. Okay, let's now find the magnitude e2, which is equal to k, q2 divided by d squared, they're all the same distances, so this will be 9 times 10 to the 9th newtons per coulomb times Q2, which is 3 coulombs, or microcoulombs. 3 coulombs would be a very large charge, we don't want to deal with that. Divide by 0 0.219 squared. Turns out that 1 over 0.219 squared is the same as 12. So that's 12 times 9e to the 9 times 3e to the 6 minus equals 324,000 newtons per coulomb. And then we do the same again for the other one, so that would be divide by 3 times 5. So divide by 3 times 5 equals, so that would be E3, which is equal to K, Q3 divided by D squared. So 9 times 10 to the 9th newtons per coulomb times 5 times 10 to the minus 6. Again, even though there's a negative charge, we'll just plug in a positive value because we're just looking for the magnitude. So that would be 0 0.219 squared, so this would be equal to 
540,000 newtons per coulomb. All right, we have the three magnitudes. Now, what's the next step? Find the x and y components first, because before we can add the vectors, we need to find their x and y components. Which means we're going to have to find e1 in the x direction, and we're going to have to find e1 in the y direction. Also here, we have to find e3 in the y direction, and we have to find, ooh, I'm running out of space here, e3 in the x direction. So it's kind of crowded in there, but again, realizing we have to find the components, and none of the components will cancel out, so we have to find them all. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, maybe we'll do that right here, because we have some space. So, e1x, e1 in the x direction is equal to e1, times the cosine of 30 degrees, which is equal to e1, which is 864,000 newtons per coulomb, times the cosine of 30 degrees, and let's see what that's equal to. 864 times the cosine of 30 equals, that's 748. So that's equal to 748,000 newtons per coulomb. So now we need to find E1 in the y direction, which is equal to E1 times the sine of 30 degrees, which is 864,000 newtons per coulomb times one half, because the sine of 30 is one half. So this would be equal to half of that, which is 432,000 newtons per coulomb. So now we've found the x and the y component of E1. Now we have to do exactly the same for E3. So E3 in the x direction is equal to E3 times the cosine of 30 degrees, which is equal to E3 is 540,000, so that's 540,000 times the cosine of 30 degrees, which is 540 times 30 cosine equals 468, we'll round it off to the nearest 1,000, so 468,000 newtons per coulomb, and then we do E3 in the y direction, which is E3 times the sine of 30 degrees, which is one half, so it would be half of 540, or 270,000 newtons per coulomb. So notice, now we have all of the x and y components of all three of the electric fields, now we're ready to go on to the next step, add the x and y components. So the electric field is equal to, we have two x components, E3x and E, let's see, E1x and E3x. And they're all, both of them pointing in the, in the positive direction, so they're both positive. So we have E1x plus E3x in the x direction. Plus, how about the y direction components? Well, we have one here pointing in the positive direction, two pointing in the negative direction. So E1y is positive, and the other two are negative. So this will be um, up E1 in the y direction minus E2 minus E3 in the y direction with the y unit vector. So notice that if you write it out like this first, and you look at your drawing, if you made a careful drawing like this, it's then easy to convert that into the vector sum that we're looking for. So now let's plug in the numbers. E is equal to E1x. Right there, that's be 748,000 newtons per coulomb plus E3x, which is right here. This is E3y, so that'd be 468,000, 468,000 newtons per coulomb in the x direction, and that would be plus E1y. Right here, that would be 432,000 newtons per coulomb minus E2. E2 was found over here, that's 324,000 newtons per coulomb. That should be a 4. Let's write a little bit better. There we go. And then minus E3y, which is right here, minus 270,000 
newtons per coulomb and that would be in the y direction like that okay now let's combine those the electric field drum rolls because this is the final answer so when we combine these we have 1100 1216 that's 1 million 216 thousand newtons per coulomb in the x direction let's see if that's right that's six one that's one that's 11 12 yes and then here uh, 270 well let me just grab a calculator makes it a little bit easier 432 minus 324 minus 270 and that's a minus 162,000 minus 162,000 newtons per coulomb in the y direction and so this would be your answer in vector format now we have a little bit of space left so if we want to draw this notice that the resultant you know, the resultant would be something like this right the resultant would be something like that that's your total electric field caused by the presence of these three charges now what we want to do maybe is find the magnitude and the direction by finding the angle relative to the x-axis we'll call that phi and so to find the magnitude that's equal to the square root of the sum of the squares of the two components of the vector. So that would be 1, 2, 16,000 squared plus 162,000 squared, like that. Let's see what the magnitude of that vector is. 1, 2, 1, 6, 0, 0, 0 squared plus 1, 6, 2, 0, 0, 0 squared equals, take the square root, and we get 120, 1, 2, 2, 6, 1, 2, 2, 7. So that gives us a 1, 2, 2, 7, 0, 0, 0 newtons per coulomb. So this would be the magnitude of the electric field when we take the two components. And then to find the angle, phi, which is equal to the inverse tangent of the y component, which is 162,000. Divided by the x component, which is 1, 2, 1, 6. We can drop off a few of the zeros. Let's see what kind of an angle we get. 126 divided by 1, 2, 1, 6. Take the inverse tangent. And about a 5.9 degree angle on that. So that's equal to 5.9 degrees. So this gives us the magnitude and the direction of the result, or we can write it in terms of the x and y components, the vector format. And that's how that's done.